welcome to september december 2020 afm paper so this question is we are discussing question three here and it's about interest rate risk management that's an easy question not a tough one so before we go through the requirements we'll first go to the requirements there are three requirements part a calculate in percentage terms so now you know that interest rate risk management can be computed using in a value terms and also in a percentage term so they have clearly specified that it is in percentage terms so if they have told you in percentage terms you have to calculate it as percentage terms the second option is not there the results of the hedging strategies that are being considered for the 48 dollar million loan if the central bank base rate increases to 4.1 percent or falls to 3.3 percent so for the two rates you have to calculate your calculations should demonstrate the rates of which payments between counterparty should be made what does it mean your calculation should demonstrate the rate at which payments between counterparty should be made hmm? this is talking about your swap okay what you have to pay and what the counterpart is so you have to demonstrate whether fixed or variable coming to part b comment on the results of your calculation in a so sometimes some questions are dependent on your previous requirements some are independent requirements that you can answer in any order for example part b cannot be answered if you haven't answered part a you see but part c if you see can be answered it's an independent theory question and it can be answered and because it is not dependent on a or b so coming to part b comment on the results in a and discuss advantages so there are two requirements first you have to comment on the results then you have to talk about advantages and disadvantages of the company of interest rate swap compared with traded caller so you have to do uh, give the disadvantages and advantages of wrap uh, swap compared with caller so caller is a new term okay this haven't been uh, this does not come very frequently i think maybe once it came i'm not sure about the times it came please check that but yeah caller is something which is uh, which could appear in your exam because it is a uh, topic which does not come and also because it does not come frequently so most of the candidates do not uh, they are not well prepared for this caller which should not be the case you should be prepared for the caller flows and also callers flows and also also what caps yes you are sealing your cap coming to part c explain the significance of the time until expiry and interest rate in the context of option valuation so significance of okay significance of time until expiry and also interest rate the two components you know that these are the two components in option valuation using black shoal option pricing model so you have to explain the significance of it and it's for four marks two for time two for interest rate so coming to the first one this should be quite easy because it's a 25 marks question and it's about interest rate risk so this should be quite easy to you okay now coming to this Fitz Harry's company is a large construction company. Treasury Department uses a variety of derivatives regularly to manage interest rate and commodity price risk. Fitz's chief executive has recently been in reviewing how the Treasury Department uses derivatives, in particular options to hedge risk, in particular options to hedge risk. Okay, so she has raised queries about aspects of option pricing which does not understand, which she does not understand. In particular, she wants to know the impact upon option price of the time until expiry of option and interest rate. Transaction to be hedged. Today's date is 1st of August. Today's date is always important to mark the date. 
in any question okay especially in your interest rate risk management and exchange rate risk management the company plans to borrow an amount of 48 million so this is a borrowing okay on 1st of december to finance a major construction project for a period of up to three years its treasury department has decided to hedge the risk associated with this borrowing as there's some uncertainty about how interest rates will move over the rest of this year central bank central uh, Ba base bank rate is 3.7 percent the current okay so the current is this 3.7 percent but predictions in the media suggested that it would rise or fall by 0.4 percent by first of december okay so it could rise or fall by 0.4 by 1st of December. The company can currently borrow funds at a floating rate. So they can currently borrow fund at what rate? Floating rate. Play, that's a variable rate, which is the base rate plus 50 basis point. The company's treasury department is currently hedging the interest rate risk by using what? Swap and options. Okay, caller on options. So swap and uh, caller. Swap. The company's bank has found a possible counterparty with a swap. The counterparty can borrow at an annual floating rate. So the counterparty, they can borrow at what rate? Floating rate at what? Floating rate plus 30 basis point, okay? 130 basis point or a fixed rate. You also need a fixed rate, okay? I have told you the other day that when you have to do swap, you need to know the fixed rate of both the party, a company and the counterparty. You need to know the variable rate of the party, uh, the company and the counterparty. So now you have to know the fixed rate of the company. The company's bank has quoted if it is a nominal fixed rate. Okay, so this is the fixed rate for the company. Okay, the bank would charge a fee of five basis point to each party individually to act as the intermediate of the SAP. So this is the bank fee. Each, that means total 10 basis point. Both parties would share equally the quotation against from the swap. Okay, so it is even if the statement is not there, we assume gain are shared equally between the two parties. Now coming to the caller. So options on the caller. Okay. This is the size. If you see it is in dollar. It's very important at what currency the caller or option of future is quoted in. This is in dollar. The contract size and option premiums. Okay. So you have been given the two exercise price. You, you have to decide call or put. So the current three month dollar future price for december future is this now if you see why they have given this future price why it is given because we are dealing with swap and caller then why future price is given the reason why it is given is because you need to find a closing future price even though it's a swap okay but you have to find the closing future price first for the future because then because that is applicable for few option and whatever is applicable for option is applicable for swap as well because it is option on option caller on options okay it is applicable for callers futures and option countries are assumed to be settled at the end of each month basis is assumed to be diminished zero all this are repeated okay it is assumed that no basis risk and no margin requirements are there now coming to the first one okay so the current rate is 3.7 if you increase it by 40 basis point it will be 4.1 if you decrease it by 40 it will be 3.3 .3. okay this should be a quite easy question okay one of the easiest question is question 3 of december 2020 so first coming to swap okay first we'll deal with swap here they have given you the fixed and the floating rate so what is the fixed rate of the company 4.6 counterparty 4.8 difference is you have to find the difference okay so the first this is the first column this is the second column this is the third column this is the fourth column in total there should be fourth column and this is how you start swap first you start with the fixed rate then the floating rate of both company and the counterparty okay then the difference so the difference between the floating rate base rate gets cancelled out 
1.3 minus 0 0.5 0 0.8 now which one is having the bigger difference okay how do you decide at what after swap which rate should be adopted by the party counterparty and which one should be by the company that is this one you have to look at the interest rate differential the one which is having the biggest interest rate differential is this one right because 0 0.8 is bigger than 0 0.2 so that means okay if you see clearly see fixed time floating rate just see the fixed rate who is having a higher fixed rate counterparty look at the floating rate who is having a higher floating rate counterparty this is a borrowing so you should be bothered about the one who is having the lower rate that is the company is having the lower rate in both fixed and floating rate compared to counterparty but their comparative advantage lies in where in the floating rate floating rate because that has the bigger difference so that means with swap the company will choose floating rate and the counterparty will go for fixed rate with swap and you need to write this statement the company has an advantage in pouring at both fixed and floating rate first you have to identify that if you see under both fixed and floating the company is having a lower rate compared to counterparty so that you have to write first then you have to write which rate they are choosing but the floating rate advantage is larger 0 0.8 now how do you calculate the gain how do you calculate the gain the difference the bigger difference is the floating rate that means with swap you are taking so that 0 0.8 minus 20 what is this 20 that is this one this you're finding the difference between the fixed and the floating rate of the two okay so when you have to find the gain as a percentage this is your starting point the difference between the two interest rate differential 0 0.8 minus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.1 what is the 0 0.1 what is the 0 0.1 well it is the bank fee it is the bank fee of both together just see here the bank fee is how much 50 no oh. five basis point bank fees 5 basis point that means 0 0.05 so it will be 0 0.1 percentage as a percentage that's why you are deducting 0 0.1 for both together the bank fee okay and then it is it is what 0 0.5 so if you take 0 0.8 minus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.1 it is 0 0.5 gain is divided equally so 50 percent of 0 0.5 is 0 0.25 so this is your calculation of gain now take the company and the counterparty without swap the company will choose fixed rate that's why 4.6 and with and the counterparty obviously will choose the floating rate and what is the benefit you deduct the benefit from the rate without swap that's why 4.6 minus 0 0.25 is the net result now if you see your gain will be without bracket okay rate without swap is in bracket because you have to pay payment is always with bracket even your net result is with in bracket but it will reduce if you see from 4.6 because of that benefit so benefit you deduct from your rate without swap so when you put in your calculator it will be minus 4.6 plus 0.25 or 4.6 minus 0.25 somehow okay at the end your net result have to be lower than what was what it was before the swap that is the whole purpose of swap your rate should reduce so net result is 4.35 coming to the counterparty same base rate plus 1.3 minus 0 0.25 that's why if you see here the base rate reduced coming to swap borrows at what rate okay so under swap you just see this swap okay company borrows at floating rate and counterparty blue uh, borrows at flow uh, fixed rate next the net result keep the net result as it is okay this 
the bank fee will be same 0 0.05 0 0.05 then if you see first we are going to work with the base rate variable component floating rate we always work first who is paying who is receiving base rate look at your net result if you see counterpart is having a net result counterpart is paying base rate that means counterpart is paying base rate that's why it's in bracket here and company is receiving the base rate that's why it is without bracket here okay coming to the fixed rate fixed rate is just the what it is just the balance that's why this 3.8 how you got this 3.8 percent here and you know of course company is paying fixed rate and counterpart is receiving that fixed rate but how do you get that fixed rate it is simple for the company it was base plus 0 0.5 this was the payment with swap it says receiving in bracket receiving how much counterparty it is receiving the base rate plus so this is in negative and this so this base rate gets cancelled and also the bank face is there plus 0 0.05 It's also in bracket. So 0 0.5 plus 0 0.05, it will be 0 0.55. So 4.35, that is your net result minus 0 0.55. The balance is your fixed rate. 3.8, which is 3.8. That's how you are getting here 3.8. Company is paying and counterpart is receiving that. Just check, are you getting, after all this, you are getting this net result or not? So we know for company we are. Now let's see for the counterparty. 4.8 minus 4.8 plus 3.8. It will be minus 1. Minus 1 plus base rate. Minus 1. Okay, this also will be an addition. So 1.05. So base rate plus 1.05. We are having, we are getting it. That means it's correct. The arrangement is correct coming to the caller since it's a borrowing it is put option put option because borrowing borrowing put deposit call so buy december put options at what price this is a caller so first it is put you know that you are going to buy put and you have to sell what so caller you buy one and you sell one buy put sell call sell call options december only okay let's see yes it is december you already given for december only but at what you are buying at what you are selling okay of course this only this is the exercise price only so you are not being confused here Usually you are given the premium for both and also the premium for both call and put at one exercise price and also for at this exercise prices. But here they have made it simple. They have just given one. So we know at call and what at put what is the premium. Okay. For this at 95.75. We are buying put option this price okay because at 95.75 we have put only at 96.25 we are selling at this premium this is the premium you see here yes number of contracts 48 million you have to it's a loan divided by 1 million contract size into 36 months because it is for three years if you see here okay who have they told about the three-year thing they have mentioned about the three-year thing yes here 
to finance a major project for a bid of up to three years. That means you have to take it in number of months. 36 months into three because caller is for three months. So it is this 576. Now if you see that in front of it there are two stars. We'll see why there are two stars are there. Here. The put option is not exercised because the company can sell the future at the future market price at this rather than the option exercise price at this. The call option is not exercised as the option holder can buy the future at the lower future market price at this rather than the exercise price at this. Okay. That will go to that later. Okay, so at this you have to decide whether you will exercise or not. So that we'll see later. That comes later. Okay, now the basis. You have to find the basis and all for future. So what is the current? It is 1st of August minus the future price. So what is the current basis rate of the central base rate? 100 minus 3.7. This was the base rate. Current minus future price 95.85. Your future price is this. Okay. So then you are getting your closing future price, which is 0 0.45. Out of this, what is how much is unexpired basis on 1st of December? It is 1 over 5. How did you get 1 over 5? Your, it is from 1st of August. Today is what? 1st of August. From 1st of August to 1st of December. But you are taking December future, December uh, caller. It expires at the end of December, so 31st December. So August, September, October, November, December, five months. But it will, but on on 1st of December, okay, so 1st of December to 31st December, that one month is unexpired. That's why it is 1 over 5. So this one is unexpired. So premium will be, since it's a caller, you are buying and selling. So the one where you are selling, you are receiving that premium. You are receiving this and you have to pay this. So this much is your premium which you have to pay. Now, if the base rate rise to 4.1%, what happens? So it will be 100 minus 4.1% minus the unexpired basis. This will be your closing future price. Under this, let's see. What is your exercise price? You are buying put at this, you are selling. Remember, your exercise price is different under this and this. Why? You are buying at one price, you are selling call at another exercise price. But future price will be same in both, 95.81. Okay, now you have to decide whether you will exercise or not. In the first buy put, will you exercise? Will you exercise? No, why? Because if you see you are having a high exercise price, you are, your exercise price is lower. It's a put. You can sell. Okay. Put means what you can sell. You sell the future at the future market. You can sell at a higher price in the future market compared to exercise price. That's why you are not exercise. When you are coming to sell call. Okay, you can buy at a lower price in future compared to exercise price because call is you have to buy and put a sell. So you will not exercise. That's why you're not exercising under both. So no loss and no gain. But premium you have to calculate. So premium will be 4.1 plus 0.5%. Sorry, that is the borrowing. Because borrowing is after the amount which have increased. Okay, it increased to 4.1 plus 50 basis point. 0.5%. That is the borrowing cost plus premium. So add premium with that. What should be your premium? This premium. Under caller 0.013. As a percentage, make sure that it is as a percentage. The requirement told you so. So this is the effective annual interest. Now what happens when it falls down? Same 100 minus 3.3 minus this. So it will be this because this is unexpired basis. Once you have found out, you don't have to find out second time again. Same exercise prices, but this time future price will change. Under this first thing, 
will you exercise no because you are having a higher price in the future compared to your exercise price so you don't want to sell because it's put and if it's sell call so don't go by this word sell okay just go by this word sell call means what sell call means you are selling the right to buy to someone else so you will buy at what higher you want to buy at a lower price so if you see your exercise price in this case is lower than your future so here you will exercise yes and what is the loss it's a loss in basis point why it will be a loss you will be shocked because you are like okay we want to exercise when it's beneficial for us right when we are having a lower price but then why loss because sell call means what you are not buying call you are selling call you are selling the right to buy at a lower price to someone else someone else is getting the benefit for you it's a loss that's why it's a loss in basis point and it is 36 the difference if you read the explanation also it will be same okay so now the borrowing cost it will be 3 plus 50 basis point and loss on option okay so that 36 it will be 0.36 percent as a percentage you are taking right And finally, the premium. Premium will be same. You add. This will be effective annual interest rate. Now there are some notes for the tutors. Let's see. As it is possible to justify a range of different hedging periods for this, any justified hedging period for the four month period of uncertainty outlined in a question after 36 months was bought a trade. You was recognized that majority of call for 36 months will not happen. See, a call for 36 months in reality will not happen. And instead, there will be a rolling series of hedges. Answer which calculated cost in dollar amounts based on the actual number of contracts and calculated effective annual rates were also eligible for full credit. Okay. Based, okay, dollar amount. So if you have calculated the cost in dollar amount, which based on the number of contracts and then calculated, and then you have calculated an effective annual in rate, it is also eligible for full credit. First, you have calculated in dollar amount then you have found the effective annual rate that is also uh, you will get the full mark why because finally what they want is effective annual interest rate only answer should be in percentage wise but that would be a long way and now coming to part b comment you need to comment so the calculations do not give a clear indif indication of which strategy should be chosen. Right? Let us see the rates. Okay. So here. The calculations do not give a clear indication of which strategy should be chosen. Correct. The swap gives a better result if base rates rise by 0.4%. Can we see this? Because here it is 4.173. But here when it rises, it is 4.613. Let us go to the swap. Swap is 4.35. So here they are saying the swap gives a better result of base rate rises by 0.4%. If okay, the option if base rate falls by 0.4%. So for the option or the caller, if the base rate falls by 0.4%, because it is 4.173 versus 4.613 it is less when it rises uh, goes down the base rate for option for caller but for swap it gives a better result of base rate rises by 0.4 percent okay why is it so 
why does swap gives better results if it rises by 0.4 percent not fall down because for swap we didn't consider that whether it rise or not we just did whether they will go by fixed time floating the reason is swap is beneficial when your rate changes when your in increase uh, rate fixed rate goes up okay so swap gives always a better result if base rate rises by 0.4 percent because then you can go by fixed rate right because if base rate goes up under swap the company is having a lower fixed rate compared to the counterparty if you go by swap so if the base rate goes up fixed rate is better for the company because it is still lower the lower it is 4.6 percent here now the decision may be determined by whether the company views a rise or fall in interest rate as being more likely or how it views advantages and disadvantages of the strategies this is your comment you need to write this because you don't know whether it will rise or fall so you have to say that it is determined by how the company views whether it is likely or not a fall or a rise and also the disadvantages and advantages of the strategy so advantages of swap what are some advantages of swap As swaps are over the counter arrangements okay swaps are what over the counter the bank comes and arranges they can be arranged in any size the amount covered by callers based on traded option is determined by the size of option contract there may be over and under hedging yes there can be under and over so the traded options available may be large for the short term if you see traded options they are for the short period perhaps up to two years less maybe than a period of the loan swaps can be arranged for much longer period yes now you have to link it with the company linking with link not linking it with the company will limit your marks okay so the company is swapping here a commitment to pay a variable rate of interest rate that is uncertain okay with a guaranteed fixed rate of interest this allows the company to focus the finance cost on the loan with certainty the net payments on the caller will depend on how interest rate moves unlike callers swaps make use of the you have to compare by the way when two things are there just listing the advantage of swap is not enough you have to compare it with what caller let's say you are comparing swap with some other option some other derivatives like future or options it is not valid in this case because your two things is callers and swap these are the two hedging strategies in this question so you need to compare all of this two you don't have to compare swap or uh, call up with another uh, derivative like forward or future or option so unlike caller swap make use of principle of comparative advantage company can borrow in the market where the best deal is available to it disadvantages of swap so through disadvantages and advantages we are giving the disadvantages of swap is what you are also giving the advantages of caller swaps are subject to counterparty risk yes there is a, the other party may default on the arrangement this should be this should not generally be a problem if the company arranges the swap through the bank it may however be a problem if it arranges the swap itself if the company arranges the swap itself with another counterparty yes then there's a risk but if it is arranged by a bank like in this case then the risk is reduced as the options that the caller is based on the on are traded on the derivative market they should guarantee that there will be no counterparty risk so you are seeing how they are giving disadvantage of swap and also giving the advantage of caller that because it is exchange traded there is no counterparty risk as the company is swapping into a fixed rate commitment it cannot take advantage of what favorable interest rate changes as it could to some extent if it use callers 
here the swap results in a lower cost than the call of interest rate rise because we saw that in fix it was 4.6 percent fixed rate but for caller it was 4.6 something 61 something so the swap was lower than the caller if interest rate rise but the caller is better if interest rate falls as swaps are over the counter in instruments they cannot be traded or laugh to laps if they are not needed the option can be traded on a derivative market of callers of option means what they are referring to caller caller can be traded but not swap coming to part c where you have to talk about time and interest rate time as an options price consists of two elements is intrinsic and time premium when you are talking about options price and linking time with it this two element you have to talk about one is intrinsic value the other one is time premium because option value is considered of two one is intrinsic value one is time premium the time premium you have to dis talk about both separately okay time premium dis diminishes over time to zero at the point that the option expires that means the the as an option is uh, become, uh, coming closer to its expiry date the time premium value is reducing why longer the time more value it has remember that that's where the time premium is diminishing because there is not much less uh, much time left when the option is uh, coming closer to its expiry date time is reducing so the time premium also will diminish theta you have to mention about theta what is this theta so this shows okay this is the latest paper december 2020 paper this shows that you have to know the greeks the five greeks theta rho vega delta gamma and all those things okay brief definition not in length what each one measures so theta measures how much time value is lost over time it is generally expressed as an amount lost per day theta reduces the value of both this you have to talk because you are referring it to the option value so theta reduces the value of both option put and call option for holders okay the change in the theta for in the money and out of the money option is broadly linear at, at, at the amount uh, sorry at the money at the money options have the greatest time premium and greatest theta you have to talk about this paragraph it's very important at the money what happens okay at the money they have the greatest time premium and greatest theta at the money okay i am assuming that you know what is in the money at the money and out of the money option so i'm not going to explain all those here when it is option is at the money it has the greatest time uh, time premium and greatest theta theta for a at the money option does not change in a linear fashion but does but changes more rapidly as the expiry date approaches interest rate this is all your textbook knowledge nothing to link with the nothing from the case study the raw what is roh when interest rate comes this automatically comes rho okay one hint okay what i want to give us that how to memorize what is for which the greeks okay so it's easy just look at the first letter like for time it is theta this i have set up on my own like no one to ever told me this so this is t and this is also t time theta then rate or interest rate you can say it is ro so rate or ro volatility or standard deviation it is vega so v and v okay so this three things you should be knowing and one the other one is gamma and delta okay So now coming to row. Row measures how the option price varies with the change in interest rate. An options row is in the amount of change in the value for one percent change in the options risk-free interest rate. The row is positive. Thus, you need to write. Row is positive for call option if the risk-free interest rate increases, and negative for put options. 
what does it mean higher the interest rate higher the for higher the interest rate for call options raw will be positive and for ne it will be negative for put options please try to understand this why is it like this why is raw is positive for call options and negative for put option what does it mean Can you tell me why? Just think one or two minutes. Okay, so the reason why it is like this risk free. If your interest rate increases, okay, your option will give you a lower value, exercise price. So will you exercise the option or not? It's a call option, option to buy. Your interest rate is increasing. So option to buy, you want to buy at a lower price, right? Correct. So you will exercise the option. So since you will exercise the option, it will be positive, higher the interest rate. How do you decide whether when it's positive or negative? Simple, when you exercise an option, value is positive. When you don't exercise an option, when something leads to you not to exercise an option, you call it as negative that's why for call option when interest rate increases it's positive because you will exercise the option opposite for put what is put put means sell when interest rate increases you want to sell at a higher price or lower price of course higher price so you will sell in the market why will you, you sell why will you exercise the option because option price your exercise price is giving a lower price that's why it is negative Okay, so raw is positive for call options and negative for put options if interest rate increases. I hope now you have understood it better. Compared with other factors affecting option price, interest rate is not a significant influence. Please write this line. This has been repeated many times in, in the answer script. So I assume it's very important that you write it. That interest rate is not a significant influence on the option price compared with other factors compared with standard deviations or or uh, gamma delta time all those things okay as interest rates now now they are giving reason why it is not significant influence as interest rate move you have to write this also why it is not significant as interest rates often move slowly correct interest rate does not change very rapidly right it takes time a change in interest rates will be most significant the longer the time until expiry of an option a change in interest rates right see when an option has a longer term let's say two years isn't it easier for interest rate to change in two years it is more likely right that interest rate will change in those two years but if your option is only for one month or two months or three months interest rate does not change uh, rapidly so it is very uh, unlikely that interest rate will change in the three months compared to two years so that's why that option longer the time change in interest rates will be most significant but less of the time it will be less significant okay now let's go to the marking scheme marking scheme for question 3 swap okay so comparative advantage of 0.6 percent 0.6 means that 0.8 from floating and 0.2 from fixed the difference is 0.6 for that one ad mark one mark for you to select fixed or variable under swap you are getting one mark you have to decide then initial decision to borrow floating by the company and fix by counterparty another one mark advantage of 0.25 percent okay so that gain one mark suitable swap rate another one mark final rate to be paid one mark final rate means this this is the final rate okay this net result to come to that net result all this you have to do come into the caller number of contract one mark basis calculation another one mark buy put and sell call one mark premium one mark two marks to exercise option or not see you have to decide also don't just assume that you're exercising all and try to find premium and gain and loss and everything 
impact of interest rate increase or decrease with caller okay so two marks coming to part b coming to part c okay so theta and rho two to three marks that means two marks for each two for time two for interest rate part b comment on the calculation is just one mark advantages of swap compared with caller disadvantages of swap compared with caller three to four so okay so three to four three to four highest mark is here let's see what are the advantages flexibility for swap longer time period certainty of finance cost three advantages of swap disadvantages is counterparty risk inability to take advantage of favorable interest rate movements and swap cannot be traded okay so that's it for question three and uh, i will be uploading question one and two from december 2020 september 20 uh, december 2020 sample paper of afm as soon as possible take care and god bless